Hi all, welcome to Raw Online. Today we are going to deal with one important variable which affects the outcome in any form of surgery. That is nothing but maintaining your hemodynamics in the perioperative period. How we are going to manipulate your parameter to optimize your hemodynamics. When you look at the monitor with heart rate being stable, saturation being 100, your mean arterial pressure almost around 70. You are happy and everything is normal. As an anesthesiologist, your primary goal is to maintain the hemodynamics and with this three component, you think you are maintaining a good job. Now look at these four people. They are moving in good synchronization. Even if one of this man goes out of that synchrony, this won't happen. Your hemodynamics is very similar to it. There is a volume which comes from the body into the right atrium and heart as a pump has to contract to get this blood out of the heart and there is certain factor in the left ventricular outflow tract which gives resistance to ejection of this blood and Apart from that, there are factors outside the heart which can affect your hemodynamics. So, there is preload which is the volume which comes to the heart. There is contractility which measures the heart as a pump, your contractile function. And there is afterload which comes from the resistance across the left ventricular outflow tract and certain factors outside. So, you measure all these four factors with the single NIPP and you say patient is absolutely fine. Is it correct? So what we do in the perioperative period? We look at the NIPP. If NIPP is adequate, we think hemodynamics are maintained. But is it correct? This study in 2013 where they studied about 400 patients and they correlated the cardiac output with the mean arterial pressure and there was no correlation. The conclusion was very clear. Change in blood pressure does not reflect change in blood flow. Your mean arterial pressure does not reflect your cardiac output. They looked at the mean arterial pressure, they looked at the systolic pressure, they looked at the diastolic pressure and none of the pressure correlated with the cardiac output. If blood pressure doesn't reflect, then what is the next pressure you think which will reflect the cardiac output? This was a study which was done 40 years before where they looked at the blood volume and the CVP. Again, there was not much correlation with cardiac output. This, was, this study was done on 180 patients and they took about 1500 measurement and they said that CVP does not correlate with cardiac output and in 2013 Paul Murray came with a very crude statement that there should be some common sense for using CVP to monitor volume. He said that a low CVP doesn't mean your patient needs fluid. There is no data to support the practice of using venous pressure to guide fluid. He even further said that the approach to fluid resuscitation using CVP should be abandoned. So, mean arterial pressure cannot be used for volume. Your central venous pressure cannot be used for volume. What is remaining? Only your pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. It, that one study by Kumar and et al. way back in 2004 itself have shown that pulmonary artery occlusion pressure also does not predict your fluid. So, a mean arterial pressure, CVP, pulmonary artery occlusion pressure, none of the pressure predicts the volume. Why is that? Why pressures are not reflecting the volume? Normally, what do you do? You put a catheter in the right atrium or in the superior vena cava and measure what is called the central venous pressure. This central venous pressure reflects the right ventricular end diastolic pressure provided your tricuspid valve is normal. 
and this right ventricular end diastolic pressure reflects your pulmonary artery diastolic pressure provided your pulmonary valve is normal and this pulmonary artery diastolic pressure reflects a LA pressure provided your PVR is normal and this LA pressure will reflect the left ventricular end diastolic pressure provided your mitral valve is normal and the left ventricular end diastolic pressure reflects the left ventricular end diastolic volume provided compliance is normal. Compliance of the left ventricle is normal. So, there are so many ifs and buts for the pressure to reflect on the volume. And you might be a very lucky physician to have all the variables to be normal in a single setting.